We were glad that it was that intimate. Me too. Because, uh, I mean, honestly, we weren't even expecting that many people. We were it expecting still, less people. Yeah, it was still a lot. Even though it was still a lot for that day. Hey, 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 everybody. Uh, didn't necessarily want to cut into your conversation, but uh, we are ready to start. We got people online as well as here in the classroom. And this is study hall. Other, other, you know, we also know about AMA, which stands for Ask Me Anything. <laughs> and so government contracting is complex and often many of our members get along the way and they get stuck and they need extra help. And so instead of paying for consulting services or coaching services, as members, this is your time to come and ask whatever questions you have. And so it's designed for you to take advantage of this to help you overcome anything. And so if you're first time, I think all three of you, and then I think Anthony is your first time online too. So all of you are new for the yes. first time. Yes. So that's right. good. Yes. <laughs> so does anybody, usually this time is where along the way you're stuck somewhere and you say, hey, how do I overcome this? Or I'm trying to do this. And so uh, this is your time to ask anything. So does anybody have any questions? If not, I, I have lots of questions to ask. I, I go ahead. You go first. Well, maybe after you start dropping some of the wonderful knowledge I know you're going to share with uh -huh. us, I'm sure I will have questions just based on what you say that I may not understand. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Awesome. So I do have a question. I am here um, representing a nonprofit. And okay. I would like to know, will these sessions benefit me as a nonprofit owner or just for profit? Uh, there are elements of grants and contracts for nonprofits. Okay. But uh, tell me a little bit more about your nonprofit. So I um, am starting a nonprofit for okay. youth. It's youth workforce development. Okay. It's essentially providing internships for um, students to work in different businesses like banks, mm -hmm. uh, accounting firms, engineering firms, architectural firms. Also providing workshops, um, teaching financial literacy, entrepreneurship, uh, social entrepreneurship. Uh, and a gamut of things. This is something that I did uh, for 16 years in the city mm -hmm. of Chicago. Okay. And have since um, uh, named, I don't say started, but named that uh, business here. And I'm looking to um, start this in January of 2019. Okay. All right. All right. So your question is I'm starting a nonprofit. Will government contracting be right for me? Yes. All right. So I love what you're doing. We've got the camera. I'm, I don't like cameras, so I'm going to put it on all of y'all. Put it over there. So everybody <laughs> online can see y'all. There we go. So this is an interactive session. Oh. So we, we don't have kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not on purpose. Look less of me and more of him. This way, I'm not, I don't have to be on camera. Since you guys are on camera. Okay, good. Just put them on camera. <laughs> All right, so the question is, I'm starting a nonprofit. Will government contracting be, uh, be right for me? Yes. So I've got a few questions for you first before I actually address your question. Mm -hmm. Are you, do you have a for-profit business? No, I do not. Just are you working full-time? I am. Okay. And what's your professional career right now? Uh, it's still in the vein, uh, still working with you. Okay. Uh, for abused and neglected children. Okay. Mm -hmm. I work for a nonprofit, but it's not mm -hmm. my nonprofit. Okay. And then why do you want to start a nonprofit? Uh, so that I can help these young people make the informed decisions so that they can uh, mm -hmm. have the tools, resources, and opportunities to write their own narratives. Okay. And those individuals who are going to college it would really cut down on wasted time because they'll have a general idea about mm -hmm. what it is that they desire to do okay. in terms of their career. Yeah. And more important than anything, for 23 years, uh, I've seen it work. I work with over 3,000 um, young people, and some of these young people are now managing directors mm -hmm. at 
Morgan Stanley. They yeah. have their own law practices. They're okay. firms and things of that nature. Awesome. Oh. Powerful. Okay. So I love your vision. I love what you're trying to do. Um, the Here's my concern for many people that I encounter, right? Mm -hmm. The operative word in a nonprofit is what? Was non, but non. it is a profit. <laughs> I try to drop that. If I, well, let me say this. Uh -huh. Maybe this study hall will help me because I've not completed my 501c3, which mm -hmm. is something that's in the making. The reason why I want to complete a 501c3 yeah. is because I know working in this industry, I know how the money's flow. Yes, okay, so that might give you an advantage. So, so let me give you my general perspective first. Now, mm -hmm. absolutely, my goal is to support you in fulfilling your dreams. Mm -hmm. If you are convinced that you want to build a nonprofit, I want to 100% support you in the endeavor. Mm -hmm. My concern with many great intention in terms of around nonprofit mm -hmm. is most nonprofit, nonprofit has even the worst failure rate than for profit. Mm -hmm. The reason for that, there's great passion, great endeavor, mission, social impact is awesome. Right. But there's no funding. Right. Cuz the 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 goal is to be a donation base uh, to ask for support to create a volunteer um, organization and often until you have been around for 3 years most foundation most, you know, groups don't even want to look at you. So you have to weather the first three years. And then when you get to that three year mark and you actually have a team and you have resources and mm -hmm. you actually have programs in place, then people will start to look at, okay, what can we do to help you? Okay. Um, okay. So how can I turn my vision into a for-profit and still do what it is? Will I have to go the foundation route or what would I have okay. to do? So, so let me address that first. And then I'll come back and give you a few options. Okay. And if you want to do a nonprofit, I'll give you some ideas also about your nonprofit. Mm -hmm. My first inclination is I, I want to give you this illustration. May I take this? Yes. Or it's being recorded. Will I have access to that? Uh, yeah. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> hey, come on in, Janae. Hey, my I'm going to pick in you tonight. Well, I called. <laughs> I <have> to. <laughs> All right. Well, it's good to have you. See, if you sit here, you get to be a camera. Oh, no. <laughs> no thanks. I'm good. The, uh, so the question is, I'm starting a nonprofit. Will government contracting be right for me? So, the, so this is my illustration. You have 24 hours in a day, right? Do you have more than anybody else in this room? No, I do not. Okay. Arthur Blank has many hours in a day. He has 24 hours also. Yeah. In five minutes of his time, compared to you using 24 hours of your time to go do nonprofit work, who can do more effective work? Um, Why? He has a team of people working for him, and he's been around. He has all the money. Yeah. <laughs> the key word is what? The last money. word? Money, right? Yeah. And, and so, in five minutes of work, he he writes a check, right. and he lets Benjamin Franklin go work for him. That's right. And Benjamin Franklin will keep working, right. and Benjamin Franklin doesn't get tired, and he works 24-7. And so you working using your personal time, working 24-7, you're not as effective right. as if you, at a certain point where you have the money yourself. Right. And, and so now, again, I want to be the other voice so that you can go into your nonprofit eyes wide open. Right, absolutely. And and so with nonprofit, the challenge is it's hard to get the funding you need, especially the first three years. And how will you sustain yourself for the first three years? And and so it requires a lot of work, especially if you're working full time, mm -hmm. and and then you you don't have do you have a financial means to quit? No, I do not. Okay. So if that's if that's the case, my my from the bottom of my heart, mm -hmm. I want to support your vision and, and your mission. And but from, from a practical perspective, 
I want you to focus on for profit and then let your money work for you. You're, go you're gonna go much longer. Now, if you really love your mission and your purpose, then keep volunteering and keep doing good the way you, you've been doing. But starting a nonprofit is a hefty endeavor. It is a labor of love and no one, you, you have no cheerleader uh, and you're gonna have to cry and people will come and, and bring you tissue, but they're not gonna lift up their time, you know, and volunteer their time because it's not their passion, right? So with that being said, if you do want to build your nonprofit, here's what you need to do. I don't necessarily have to because you said enough. What okay. I want is information on how I can have a for-profit. Okay, awesome. Do <laughs> All right. So, so with that said, uh, and I don't think about about this. Time. Oh, it makes a lot of sense. I've not had anyone explain it to mm -hmm. me. Um, from that yeah. perspective. So I am very open. Yes. And I'm ready. Focus on making money. You can do a lot better using your money to do good okay. than your time. Okay. And then the free time you do have, volunteer and keep doing what you do. Okay. All right. So so if, if your mission is to help youth, mm -hmm. if your mission is to do entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. um, then you can create certain ways of how you can do that, right? So you can have a, uh, instead of a traditional for-profit, I want you to look into a for-benefit. For-benefit? Yes. And the for-benefit is a new model. You've heard of Ben and Jerry? Yes. Ice cream? Mm -hmm. They are a for-benefit organization. Mm -hmm. Is that like a social enterprise? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. The for-benefit, the other word is we use social entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And if you want to do research on it, research B Corporation. And B Corporation is the original uh, entre uh, social entrepreneurial nonprofit that that gather a lot of different entrepreneurs together and say, hey, in our mission to make profit, why don't we also have a social responsibility behind it? The challenge with a nonprofit is that there's no revenue model. Yeah. The challenge with a for-profit is it's all about revenue. It's all about money. It's all about profit. And if there's an oil spill, who cares, right? right. Let's just clean it up after this, after the spill. If 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 it hurts the environment, you know, we'll fix it when we tackle it. And so it's, there's not a dual mission. So the B Corporation, they started talking to for-profit corporation and say, hey, you have a social responsibility. Why not get certified as a B Corporation? So that's the genesis of the B Corporation. Well, in 2009, the first state, which is, I believe is Vermont, mm -hmm. they said, we love this B Corporation. Why not formally adopt this here and create a for-benefit entity structure? So instead of like being certified as a B corporation is just meaning that you volunteer to hold to their standard and their ethics and so forth, right? But you're not you're not officially recognized by anybody outside of this organization. So Vermont started what they call a for benefit business model. So a for benefit is a hybrid between a nonprofit and a for profit, where you actually have you are a for profit, but you also have a social mission. So it's kind of like a B corporation, but it's actually recognized by the state. Since that time, when GCA, Government Contractors Association, when we were born, I wanted GCA to be a for benefit organization. But since it was only available in Vermont, I didn't want to do it in Vermont yeah. because there's no formal, I didn't know anybody, they don't, you know, I didn't have register agents up there. Yeah. And I thought, we'll organize in Georgia, and then when the for benefit model comes to Georgia, we'll revamp it at, at some point. So, so is it, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So to that end, a when you revamp it, will you have to establish a completely different entity? Uh, and you, dissolve you can, the old, but or? the way we're going to do it, we're just going to continue to operate it, and then maybe form a sister organization as a for benefit. That's how you get yeah. around it. Okay. Yeah. Because okay. it's too much history at this point. Absolutely. Now. Since that time, um, <clears throat> there has been uh, 
that's not the one I'm looking for. Now, while you're looking that up, though, are there some constraints? Because I, I can see people using that for benefit status as a tax aversion type thing. Are there? I know some you, you're treated as a for profit from a tax oh, perspective. Oh, you are. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. But you have you have a revenue model and a social purpose at the same time. Nice. Okay. So right now there's 34 states that have been uh, that have approved the for benefit model. Georgia is pending legislation to oh, approve no in Georgia. There. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so do we have an ETA, or it has to still go um, through the proper it, channel? It was in the legislative session last year, and I actually tried to reach out to the congressman or the state legislator that is supporting that. He's actually in our district here. Oh, wonderful. Um, and I try to reach out to him and let him know that we want to support that endeavor, but never got, you know, I think he's got a full load, so never heard back from him. So it hasn't actually gone for a vote. Yeah. So if you're interested in a full benefit, the ideal way is to maybe set up in Delaware okay. and or in a state in Florida or in, you know, Illinois is, it in Illinois? Illinois is yep, it's in Illinois. This is Illinois, right? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah. So it is in Illinois. Uh, that's your roots. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You from Chicago? I am. <laughs> <laughs> is that west side or south side? Every side. Okay. <laughs> everywhere. Okay. No chocolate. Okay. Yeah. So so that would be my suggestion. Now with that you can do both because it's it's part of your DNA now. Okay. To to do good and also make money. So what am I doing to generate funds? So now you have to get creative, right? Mm -hmm. Selling T-shirts, selling. Yeah. No. Okay. What am I doing? Yeah. So, so about? to. Because remember my the demographics I'm serving. They don't have money. Mm -hmm. First of all. Yes. That's, you, that's always key. Um, you. Uh, that range is eighteen you to twenty-four for the most part. Yeah. Uh, you have to be Robin Hood. Okay. And what's Robin Hood's model? Uh, is it <laughs> take from the rich and give to the poor? Right. Yeah. Take from those that have it and use it to serve the poor in our situation. Okay. Uh, we don't necessarily have to steal, but we have to appeal to them and then give them a reason to work with. Uh, I have a awesome idea I want to share with you. It, okay. It's just not appropriate for this timing. Okay, so go ahead. Yeah, yeah so I have an incredible ahead. idea. I've been working on it. I want to do a lot of social I'm work here, also. Here, uh, and I've, you I've created a great program. I just don't have the bandwidth to to implement it and it takes money from the wealthy to serve the underrepresented so and i'll be more than happy to share with you and i'm interested in that too uh, well if you're interested we might as well talk about it <laughs> <laughs> can you, yeah can you go to atlantasdi.com sure atlanta S like sbi.com okay give you a better perspective of what I'm, I'm referring to. So this okay. is what I've done. This is your interest. This is mine. Very nice. Come on. Very nice. So just site. scroll down. Mm -hmm. Keep going. So it's a Not summer really. program. Okay. Mm -hmm. Could be better. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, in terms uh, of the layout and the clean, you, you and Mark, are you going to help me? I got a marketing company. Okay, yeah, nice. So the scrolling down, it's not clean at all. Oh, that may not, but I meant as far as the look of the site. Yeah, that looks fine. The interface. But you know, I'm in. Mean, I have a marketing company, so I get it. It's, it's still very clean. In terms so of when look. you get a chance, I sure, just, sure. All right. So I sell into that. Yeah. Uh, awesome. So I'll, just, I'll I'll look at this more. Yeah, it is a nice site. And again, that's just something I did with no experience. You did that. Really? Yeah, that's pretty awesome. That Wix. is awesome. What's your platform? And that's just Wix. Wix. And that's yeah. Wix? Yeah. I would have never guessed that was Wix. Yeah, Wix does yeah, that's a great good. But Wix charges you monthly, though. No. You this don't play is, monthly? This is a free one. <laughs> wow. And I'm you, not gonna you, pay, you I'm did not that gonna, layout, though. Yeah, and we'll get into that because I really want to. Very nice. Now, I know what he's saying in terms no, of scrolling no, no, down, but it's still a very clean, nice white space. That particular one is for your mobile. Oh, All right, so why don't we do this here? I will, at the end, uh, we'll take about during intermission, okay. and those that want to leave can leave okay. to the next session, and those that want to stay to hear what I have to say about how to create a, a revenue-producing youth entrepreneurship program. Okay. Nice. And, and Frederico, right? 
Francisco. Francisco, you're welcome to stay. And anybody else who wants to stay okay. can stay. Thank you. All right, so next question. Anthony, you got any questions? Um, I'm going to turn your speaker on, your phone. Can you hear us okay? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Okay. So what's your question? So this is AMA. Ask me anything. Hi. I, um, I, I sent you a list of quick Actually, I sent them to Pamela Harris, and I think she forwarded them to you. Okay, so yes, she did. Let me pull it up. Give me one second. Sure. Now, where are you joining us from, Anthony? Uh, from South Bend, Indiana. South Bend, Indiana. Man, you are like so oh, far away. <laughs> I know. Hey, how's that snow coming? How's that working for you? Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's something that comes every year, so you just have to deal with it. I, I'm, I'm really busting your chops. I'm from Chicago originally, and I do not miss that at all. And, and, and you know what? I go through Chicago every day. There's no snow in Chicago right now. Really? And you got and it? We in have some here. Oh, well, and you we have some here, yeah. Wow. Uh, unfortunately. Yeah, well, God bless you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, your question is when can I meet for the orientation? So, we have orientation about once a month. Uh, the next okay. orientation is going to be December uh, 12th, I believe. Let me double check quickly here. Um, it's, I, I believe it's December 12th. Uh, if okay. I remember correctly. Huh? Prior to the workshop, probably. Yeah, yeah, I, I believe it's December 12th. So Pam just hasn't put it up here, but. Uh, that's a question that Pam can answer because she handles all the events. But okay. put it on your calendar for December 12th. Are you planning to come to Atlanta or you join online? You can join online. No, no, it'll be online. Um, I plan on coming to Atlanta um, probably sometime at the beginning of next year. Okay, hey, if you come to Atlanta, let me know in advance. I'll clear my schedule so we can spend some time to talk about your logistics company. Absolutely. I want to make sure you get some help and really do awesome. Yeah, and and I'll be bugging you guys. Um, I've been bugging the heck out of Pamela so far. So, um, yeah, I'll be I'll be talking with you. All right, sounds good. So let's go to your second question. Um, how to become a sub or a prime? And you are a logistics company, right? That is correct. Verifying that. Okay, good. So, so this is an important strategy for all of you. And this is a very important question. Should I start government contracting by being a prime or a subcontractor or should I do both or which is easier and so forth? Being a prime requires, uh, Anthony, I'm gonna mute you for a second. And then, that's, that's fine. Uh, all right. Where's my audio? Here we go. So, so very important strategy. Should, should you be a sub or should you be should you be a prime first? Now, by being a prime requires that you have to go through a very lengthy process to become a government contractor. It usually takes about, if you do it without any help, if you do it without GCA's help or any, any help from anybody, on average, it takes about three years to break into the government market. Three years to be a prime. Now, who has three years? Most small business, you know, you do. <laughs> I don't want to spend three years, but I got time for this. Yes, but most small business, you don't have three years. And, you know, you're, you're, trying, to, you know, you're trying to find your next client next week, not next month. You might not even have two or three months reserved, so you're like, okay, hey, I don't have three years. So being a prime is a lot of work. What we do here at GCA, we reduce that time frame. Hey, come on in. We reduce that time frame to about six months to 18 months. So that's, that's the typical members and client that we have. When they come and use the processes and the methodologies that we've developed, it saves them a lot of time and a lot of headaches and so forth. And that's partly because we have a lot of tools and resources to shortcut that time frame. 
Now, being a sub is usually the best way to get started. You don't have to, most of the time, you don't have to register in SAM. You just need to find a large company that's winning contracts in your industry. And they are large companies when they win a contract over uh, uh, $750,000. Hey, come on in. Are you joining uh, office hour study hall or you're yeah. here for the other class? Okay, yeah, just go through there. Okay. And so if you are uh, being a sub, it's in normally three to six months, you can probably start getting some contract. When a large company wins a contract over $750,000, they are required to use a subcontractor that's a small business. About 35% must go to small businesses. Did you guys catch that? Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So if they are required to use women-owned businesses, 8A companies, veteran business, small business in general, then that might be a quicker path to revenue. And then while you're trying to do subcontracting work, then you start implementing your steps to be in a prime. Because being a prime will take a little bit longer. Now, it may be possible to do it two, three months also to be a prime. It just depends on how aggressive you, you are. I'm just telling you, in general, without any help, it's three years. With help and methodology, six to 18 months. And being a sub, you could do it in three to six months. It's, it's a, a little bit shorter path. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to stop here to see if there's any other questions and I'm going to come back to some of your questions, Anthony. Any other questions from the group before we move on to some of Anthony's questions? Probably, but I'm just going to, if you could just kind of go through here. <laughs> no, I don't mean it okay. in that way, but you know what I'm saying, knock them down because I may have some specific things. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. How long can I expect before the first contract? That's a very, everybody wants to know that question, right? <laughs> when am I going to get the money? All right. So that is the magic question. And, and I, I, to do that, I'm going to have to tell you a few stories, okay? Because that's what, that's what, uh, that's what Glory asked. So let me tell you Glory's story. This is Gloria. So Gloria is a flooring contractor. She does flooring. And she came, she said, hey, Abe, who have you worked with that have one contract the fastest? And I said, Gloria, don't worry about being fast. Worry about doing it right, right? Because <laughs> sometimes being fast does not always necessarily mean you know, you're doing it right. And she said, no, I'm, I'm very serious. You know, she's, you know, she is like a serious entrepreneur. She wants to get there fast. And so I told her that Bonita did it in four months. So Bonita, in four months, she won her first contract, $24,500, and this was in child care services. Now, Bonita had two, three, three organizations. She had a nonprofit, she had a two for profit, and she was working full time. Wow. <laughs> so I said, Bonita, you're doing too much. <laughs> but she's serious. So, you know, sometimes you have to go after what you want to do. and uh, while working here full time, she also, you know, went after government contract. And so we took her daycare business. Now she doesn't have a traditional daycare where you work, you know, you, it's a neighborhood a little daycare center. Her daycare business is she does group child care. So we were able to find a military event that they, they put on veteran events and parents come, the veterans come to the event and they bring the kids, but the event is designed for the parents, it's not for the kids. So somebody needs to watch the kids. So she watched those kids, about 50 kids for two days and got paid $25,000. 50 kids? Yeah. That's okay. Every penny, <laughs> every penny. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so, so that was Bonita's story, right? Well, let me finish Bonita's story and then I'll go back to Gloria. And then while she's working full time, we, you know, went after and we found a project this is actually a grant because she does health and wellness also and part of the reason why she got the child care contract was she believes in healthy lifestyle and healthy food and so forth 
And mm -hmm. so instead of feeding goldfish and crackers and so <laughs> forth, part of her proposal to the contracting officer is, hey, I, I'm not just going to watch the kids. I'm going to have a curriculum and I'm going to actually teach them about health and wellness. And nice. I, all the snacks that we have will be all organic and all healthy stuff. So that kind of set yeah. her apart from everybody else. Yeah. And, and, and so, but her second was a grant from the U.S. Department of Agriculture to educate kids mm -hmm. in what they call food desert communities. Mm -hmm. And it was a $229,000 grant and she got that and uh, we celebrated. And then she, a few weeks later, she sent me an email. She said, Abe, hey, I got some awesome news. And she said, I turn in my two weeks notice. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's a raise. So, that's good. right. Mm -hmm. So that's her story, right? And so Gloria, you know, I told that story to Gloria. And Gloria said, okay, I've got a target now, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so Gloria said, I got a target now. I'm going to do it in less than four months. Mm -hmm. So in three months, she won two contracts. Wow. A $260,000 project up in Camp Lejeune in North Carolina doing uh, flooring for uh, the gymnasium. Mm -hmm. And then she won another $350,000 contract doing flooring for Coweta County school system. Mm -hmm. So so it is possible to do it short, but that's not the norm because there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And let me explain to you why there's a lot of work that needs to be done, right? Let me- May I ask a question? Uh -huh. Did they both have teams supporting them, or did they do it? Did they do it Bonita did. She won the contract on her own, and then we found a team to support her afterwards. Because mm -hmm. watching 50 kids, I think the ratio was like one to ten or something. Right. So she needed to find. Oh, you know, yeah. I mean, as far as getting the contract, did they have a team to kind of help gear the? They 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 opted to be in our coaching pro program. Okay. Oh. Yeah, and so I guide them through the process. Mm -hmm. Now. If you if your budget is tight and you don't have mm -hmm. the resource to be in a coaching, that's what this session is for, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what this software is for. So this is our <laughs> Gov Fast Track software, and it takes you through 975 plus steps, right? So let me go because here, so 900 and you know actually 975 steps. So it takes you step by step by step by step by step by step as a checklist, and you just follow the work now. So you, it's not left to chance anymore. So for example, let me take, you know, so the first part of what I do is take government contracting and break it down into an easy to understand process. And the, the first process is break it down to easy to understand formula, right? The five P's. Mm -hmm. So after today, all of you know government contracting. It's just about five P's, <laughs> right? Five P's, you, you got that? Yes, sir. All right, it's just five P's. And then the first P, the last P, you don't have to remember. Don't worry about the last P, because the last P is what? Profit. what? Profit. Profit, right? That's what your business. It's a result of the four P's. So if you do the four P's right, you'll get to the fifth P, which is profit. So the first P is preparation, second P is promotion, Third P is proposal. Fourth P is performance. Under preparation, there's four major steps, assessment, strategy, education, registration. And then I'm just going to break out one detail. Under registration, you're saying, okay, I want to register to be a vendor to the government. So if you open that up, there's a lot of steps in here. And you say, okay, let me register to be a vendor here. You open that. It says to register to be a uh, government vendor, you need to be in SAM, SAM.gov. And it says, okay, the first thing you need to do is, is get your SIT code. And it has a link to it so that you can go get your SIT code. And so you just click on this <clears throat> and you put in here training. So for you, it would be training, you know, youth training may not show up, but you know, it's more training. More force development. Yeah, it could be something like that. Job training, right? Vocational. Mm -hmm. So right. this will be your one of your sickle, 8331. Okay. Then once you have that, you come back. And then, okay, now that you have that, the next step, which is step number 285, get your DUNS number. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have your DUNS number ready, you click on this. And it takes you to Dun & Bradstreet. Now, 
How much does it cost? Free. Free, free. right? Because if you if you <laughs> if, what you say, free ninety nine. <laughs> if you call them, they're gonna say, Oh yeah, it's only four ninety nine to set up your done number and you get account rep and we help you build your credit, all this stuff. Just tell them, no, I'm registering to be a government contractor and I want to set up my account. And they they have to set up to you for free. Yeah. Yeah. So I just saved four hundred ninety nine dollars there. Mm -hmm. So you do that and then you come back and what you do is you mark up 100% and you go to the next step, you go to the next step, next step and so forth, right? So, so this is to, be, to register, this is not even everything else. Then you go into promotion and the government, you know, under promotion, you have to do, create your image, you have to create and yeah, talk about your marketing strategies and how to email to government buyers and so forth. Then you have to address how to build relationships because it's the same like the commercial. It's all about relationships. So how do you do that? Well, under image, the government does not use brochures. If you're talking to a contracting officer and you send them a brochure, they're going to like, okay, honey, thanks so much for coming in. I will keep it on my file. And as soon as you leave it, throw in the trash, right? <laughs> but they, they use capability statements. They don't use brochures. And so you have to speak to them in their language. You guys catch that? You have to speak to them in the language that they understand. <laughs> now you never had that happen. Yeah, that's right. That's the first one. Yeah, I love it. Handle like it. Francisco. Okay. All right. Now, I have no idea what you said. Neither do I have what you said. But let me translate for you. I said, all of you are small business owners. I work for the government as a contracting officer. Now that you're here trying to get government contracts, if you raise your hand right now, I'm going to sole source you a contract. What's in it? So, okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. And, and that happens, right? I sent one of the companies, uh, you know, one of the companies I'm working with, He, they were in IT. And they went to a GDOT, Georgia Department of Transportation. Yeah, you, know, you go to G dot, they don't do IT work. They do you know flooring, paving, street, roads. They do horizontal construction, right? And for IT companies to show up to an event talking about opportunities with G dot, well, so the contract also goes through talks about all these different big construction projects and you know who in the room, you know, uh, get ready because these these are coming down the road and prepare for it and so forth. And at the very end, she said, she looked around the room, she said, is there anybody that is in IT? Mm. And he was the only person, wow. right? Oh, Raised his hand. And he wasn't sure, right? It's got like, oh, is she going to call me out for, you know, for being IT in a construction meeting? She says, I've got an IT project. I want you to, I want to talk to you about it because mm. I need an IT company. So he went to learn governance, right? And he, knowing that he had to speak the language, you, you go to events and you keep learning. Right. And so he was at this event and they got an IT contract out of that. Wow. So you have to learn governance, which is the language of contracting. Mm -hmm. And this tool here helps you to do it. And, and Janae, you had it for about a month now? Officially two, can you believe it? Oh, wow, so already. So, and I, I, I guess he called on me because I'm always shouting his praises on developing this tool. I mean, everybody should get this tool. Not say everybody, everybody should get this tool because what he did not tell you is the first 200 steps helps you even establish your entity. If you don't have any entity, nonprofit or profit, those steps actually show you with the state of Georgia in our case, how to even get your entity as an LLC, a corporation, what have you. So he's, you know, he's pretty, uh, how should I say, humble man. But if you've already had your entity set up, you've run through the first 200 steps. 
You can make money out of just that. <laughs> I charge people 500 bucks for salaries of business. Exactly. There you go. So this is worth its weight in gold, and you can always have access to it in terms of you know referencing. Because there's a lot of documentation that includes attachments, websites, links, the whole nine yards. So. Yep. About 200 templates, documents, samples, <laughs> team agreements, non-disclosure agreements, employee handbook. Uh, many, many different things already established in here. So it, it's probably got about $9,000 worth of content in here. Absolutely. If not more. Yeah, probably more because mm -hmm. my four years to create it. <laughs> 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 All right. So um, so does that answer your question? Being a prime is you have to go through 975 steps. Now, does all 975 steps apply to you? No, it doesn't apply to every company, but it's very comprehensive so that you – uh, you can make sure that you're doing it properly. Any other questions before I go back to uh, Anthony's questions? Oh, you. And let me caveat that. And to that end, just the example that he used, you may not even get through all those steps before an opportunity presents itself. It's just being the timing of being in that space. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's good to know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You don't need to finish all 975 steps. Right. No, 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 no. Okay. It is kind of like. Um, are you ever ready to get married? Have mercy. Never. Right? <laughs> you, you're never ready to get married. Are you Are you ever ready to have kids? Never. Very good analogy. And so, are you ever ready to win government contract? Probably never. But you do as much as you can. The government is risk averse, and so the less risky you look, the more they're going to trust you, and the more they're wanting to, you know, award you a contract. Ed, can you tell them about the group uh, coaching that you do? If they like haven't gone through the steps, I've been around for a while, <laughs> checking it out. <laughs> but can you tell them about the coach, like the program that you have in case they like get the award and they're not ready or they they're like barely ready? What's that fast track you all have or have? We, we have the Gov Accelerator. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. it. So we have a Gov Accelerator program and it's it's a group coaching, and so we take about three or four companies together. And I take you through step by step through all those 975 steps in, a, in an environment like this, sir. But every week we meet for 12 months. Every week we meet, we talk about what needs to be done. And then the homework assignment is assigned to you, just like this company here. So if you look at this company, so so they're going through the, you know, so every week, right, we assign work and then they go do the work and then we review the work. When we get back together, we review the work, make sure that the work is done well. And then we go to some more tasks and we do that over and over and over. So you have many options. You can do the Gov Accelerator, which is a you know a process that you actually get help, or you can just get the software and use the software like Janae's, she's using the software and you know her budget is tight, so she's using the software and and using that. And we actually um, I had a young lady, she won a one point two almost 1.3 million dollar contract just following these steps that she come to class kind of like you come to class and follow these steps and she was able to go and win a 1.3 million dollar contract so you're talking about a one-on-one -on -one mentorship program how much is that um i can you know usually we have two programs and so we have one-on-one -on -one coaching and we have group coaching how much is a one-on-one? One-on-one is based, we have uh, three tiers of the one-on-one. -on -one. So if you want to meet weekly, it's uh, 39 a month, 39.99 a month. If you want if you want to meet uh, the first two months, we meet weekly. And after that, we do bi-weekly. And that's $2,000 a month. So for less than the price of a secretary, you actually get real professional help to guide you through the process. And if you, and if you just didn't want to go through any of the process, you just wanted to pay for somebody to do it. <laughs> for that too? Yeah. <laughs> you still gotta do your part. <laughs> That's gonna be the area for focus. And let me just say you know, that. You're gonna hire someone. Yeah. I understand. You think about marketing and branding. And but but yeah. the good news is, in the government space, if, Abe, I can truly say I can speak to this. The main, how should I say, success factor is your relationship. All this truly, is this administrative technology. You know, yeah, we get it. Right, we got to do right. paperwork. We got to right. file this. Yeah. But one of the things that excited me is because I need no strangers. That's just my personality. Yeah. So it fits me 
but more importantly, I think if you get the main thing about relationships, that's that's most of the battle. Am I right? Yes, relationship is still key. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's all about building a good relationship yeah. and yeah. getting so source contract. That's a very good way to start, right? So I'm going to Tamisha, I'm gonna answer your question. So if you don't want to do it yourself, you need to hire a capture manager, and I'm gonna show you <laughs> how much capture yeah, managers go for. Just curious, you know, do it, pay them the fee. So capture managers oh, goes you in for. Oh. Well, in Georgia, there's no oh, such wow. title as a capture manager. Got it. Okay. So capture managers in the D.C. area. This is the national average. D.C. is more like 196. So this is what capture manager is going for. And 975 step is really preparing you to be a capture manager for your own company. You're learning a very important skill set. But let me show you the GCA model. So capture manager for GCA is $4,999. So instead of $13,333, uh, you can get the support of GCA's capture management services for about $5,000 a month. Now, this is for like mature company. I, I don't even talk about this here because you ask, I usually, yeah. for most small business, I just say, hey, you're a member, come to classes, it's free. All the, right. Most of our classes are free, keep coming, learning. Take advantage of study hall like this here, right. work within your budget. And then for those who have a little bit more resources, get the Go Fast Track software. It's going to help you do it faster. And then for those who have a little more resources, get the coaching program. And for those who are like you, just want to write a check, then, then this is the way to do it. And, and here we actually have our team to do it. We have a proposal writer and we have a relationship development person. And we put on your hat, your business card. We become you in the eyes of the government. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds a little bit skeptical, but I promise y'all he's not lying. <laughs> I, when I first started coming to GCA like last year, I was meeting people who were within seven years of contract. And I was like, what? Mm -hmm. And I talked to everybody that works here, so definitely it's worth the investment. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I would, if you're interested in doing it, do it. Mm -hmm. There's money left on the table. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to have to take you out. I know. <laughs> dinner on me, dinner on me, right? <laughs> well, you, you know, I told you, I'm an informal ambassador already. So. And, and, you know, and to that end, let me say this, too. One of the things that impressed me about GCA is the responsiveness. Mm -hmm. From Abe on down, everybody responds. Because a lot of times you're sending them emails and people don't really respond. Right? But to get a personalized approach, regardless of what tier you come in in, you, you, that's hard to find in this day and time when people tweet everywhere and Facebook everything. And, you know. Well, I appreciate that. I do my best. Absolutely. All right, so the next question is how... So how long does it expect, you know, do you expect to win your first contract? The, the answer to that is it depends on you. Right. The processes I've already mapped up. The hard work's been done on my end. Now it's just a matter of are you willing to go through the steps and get it done? That's it. There's no more mystery to government contracting. Now, if you go to the SBA, I love the SBA. We work closely with them to collaborate back mm -hmm. and forth. But if you go to the SBA, you know what they're going to tell you? The first thing you need to do is get registered in SAM. Oh, absolutely. Now, SAM registration, what step is that for us? Right, SAM registration. That is step number 282. So there's all these other infrastructure that you need to do before you can register in SAM. And not, you know, we love the SBA. We love all the different groups that support the government market because we have to work in tandem with them, but many of the support from the SBA, many of them have never owned a business, so they they can only speak to you from their angle. Mm -hmm. They understand policies, regulations, and compliance. They don't necessarily understand entrepreneurship and what you have to go through mm -hmm. to be ready to even engage them. Absolutely. Um, you mind explaining SAM to me? SAM.gov, mm -hmm. what does SAM stand for? You remember? System for Award management. There you go. <clears throat> so that became, Sam is um, the database to be a vendor in. Okay. Yeah. Every business that's trying to do federal work 
and grants must be registered in SAM. Uh, so let's go to the next question. So the answer is up to you, Anthony. How aggressive do you want to be? And I know you do um, you do some driving too, and so you know during your off hours, get get some work done. How do you read the contract offering? So uh, what you mean by this is how you how do you read the solicitation or the bid? Now, this is a two day class on how to read a solicitation. So it's no, there's no short answer to this here, but I will give you a short answer for the purpose of today. When you read a bid or a solicitation, it's going to ask you, sometimes we call it RFP, right? The request for proposal. It's going to ask you, give me, I want A, B, and C. And so, you identify and so you look at what they're asking for then you you take a notepad and you write out all the requirements that they're looking for for example logistics for you anthony they're going to ask do you have insurance that covers up to five million dollars uh do you have drivers that are um bonded do you have all these different things and so you create your list and if you can meet all those and they might say uh, you know, since you're in trucking, they might say, can you haul, um, can you deploy two, 200 drivers in two months? And then you're thinking like, well, I only have me and my <laughs> best friend's uncle. <laughs> Not even best friend. <laughs> and so that situation, you say, okay, um, let me figure out how I'm going to get 200 drivers in two months. And that's called teaming. So you don't have to have 200 drivers. There's larger companies out there, they have 200 drivers. And so that's called teaming. And so, and so you read through the solicitation, look at all the requirements, and you figure out what's my strategy to meet all the requirements. And then in your proposal response, you say, I will give you A, B, and C. This is how I will give it to you this is my processes and my methodology. This is my management style. This is the quality assurance program I have in place. This is my teeny partner that's going to help me fulfill this here. And this is why you should choose me. And that's really it. So that's proposal writing and in a very short, simple answer. But that's a two day class. So I can't answer your full question there, Anthony. Where are all the places to look for contracts? All right. Mm -hmm. So the answer to that is where? Wow. Members? US where? A spending that no, for contracts, not awards, awarded contract. Oh, current Gov opportunities. Directions. Gov directions. All of you who are members, you have access to Gov directions. It's free. It's a $600 value. If you went to Gov directions and you, you call up, you know, our partners at Gov directions, And you talk to Mark and you say, hey, Mark, I want to sign up. And Mark's going to say, OK, uh, fork, fork over $600 and I'll set you up. <laughs> but as a member of GCA, guess what? Guess how much you pay for it? Zero. Zero. Membership in GCA is $4.99 for the year. And you get this free tool. Wow. And Gov Directions, what Mark and his team does is they look at federal contracts they look at state, every single state contracts. They look at almost every county, 3,000 counties. They look at 35,000 cities and they aggregate that every single day. And they put it to one database and then you come and log in and create a profile and say, I'm looking for training. And every day, every morning, when there's a project that have the word training, it shoots you an email. Yeah. So, I turn mine off. <laughs> you need to qualify a little bit further then. Yeah, I'm go, I'm changing it to yeah. actually because it was that was being a whole like. So Anthony, um, you have Gov Directions free as a member of GCA, and email Pam if you haven't. That's what the new member orientation covers all your benefits as a member, how to take advantage of it. But since you're asking now, 
um, go ahead and call Pam and ask her to set you up on your gov direction and she will set that up as members if you don't have it yet it's yes. part of your membership there's no extra cost yes. and and just let Pam know now if you are not a member and you are budget tight I'm gonna show it to the rest of you how you can do it for free okay the best site is gov uh, fbo.gov Frank Boy Oscar, FBO.gov. It stands for Federal Business Opportunities. And you can come here. Now, here you can only find federal contracts. You can't find state contracts. You can't find city contracts. So you come here and you have a few options. You can put in here um, what industry are you guys in? Um, electrical construction. Oh, I love what you guys do. Man, that's awesome. That's a lot of money for you guys. All right. So, do you know your next code? Um, actually, to, today was my first. I spoke with um, okay, um, Richard. Okay, and he told me um, he wanted. He said he wants to talk to me. It's going. We're gonna go over some stuff tomorrow. But okay, I wanted to um, see how it works. All right, good, good. So well, I'm, I'm glad you're here. Guys, so it's my first time. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull it up for you, right? So. It should be two three nine two three eight uh, specialty trade electrical contractor. This is you here. And you just knew that, don't you? I've seen it. Yeah. <laughs> That's just years and yeah. years of knowledge. So, so this is your you primary next code. So you need to remember this. This two three eight two ten. Two ten. Six digits. Yeah, write it down. You don't need it. All right. So you want to guess how many projects there is in your industry right now? Any guess? Um, We're gonna find out in a second. But guess a hundred. Okay, all right. Let's see. Who says more than a hundred? More, more. Who says less, more. Than, 100? More. <laughs> less than hundred? Okay. Also, all right. It's, it's more. I'm just gonna, just gonna be the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna go for the gold? Yeah. How many projects? Oh, well, one thousand two hundred thirty-five projects. That's in your next code. Is that doing business with uh, Yeah, yeah. It, it starts in about 30 minutes. We'll be wrapping up. Yeah, yeah, we're wrapping up. We're gonna oh, no, no, I'm staying for the after, after part. Oh, she's talking about after oh, yeah, we yeah, finish yeah, yeah. everything. So, like right here, right? <laughs> Power UPS, electrical contractors and other wire installations. Upgrade electrical transformers, and I mean, this is what you guys do. Sky's the limit. Wow. So there's plenty of opportunities. It's just a matter of you going through 975 steps, getting ready to come and work. All right, so um, we're out of time. So I'm gonna see if I can answer these last two questions quickly. What is the need? What is needed to land government contract? So the question, uh, the, or the answer to this question, Anthony, is govfasttrack.com. And that is the Gov Fast Track tool, 975 steps. And there may be more questions coming. All right, <laughs> shoot them through uh, anytime you want to. Uh, and then every the the second Tuesday of every month, we have study hall like this here, and it's freestyle. You know, you come with your question. It's not scripted or anything like that. And this is your time to ask any questions. So. So tonight was awesome. Well, like was fast track. How much does that cost? As a member, it is usually it's two thousand dollars, but as a member, it's nine hundred ninety-nine dollars. And if you if you are really budget tight, Richard can cut it into two payments for you. Okay. Yeah. I need to marry Rich. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> All right. So for those of you, uh, Anthony, hey, so great having you online, and everybody else. Uh, you know, great having you guys for study hall. Anthony, I look forward to meeting you sometime in the new year. Thank you. All right, I, hey. I, missed the young, I missed the young lady's question. She said, if you really strive for money to get the um, the um, Go fast, fast track software, yes, you do what? Uh, we could cut it to two payments for you. Okay, okay, I was planning. Thank you. Yeah, and so just uh, talk to um, Pam or Richard, and they will set that up for you. 
Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. All right. Hey, great talking to you. Looking forward to talking to you again. Um, and then we are doing this session, uh, the next session uh, for our association meeting. Uh, we record it. That's the association meeting is the only session that we don't do a live because there's too much moving pieces. All of our sessions, we always record it and we always try to do a live except the association meeting. So Anthony, you won't be able to join us, but uh, we're going to record it and it will be available in the Gov Training Vault. Okay, and the meeting for, meeting for tomorrow, I'll be able to attend that one, correct? Yes, awesome. Uh, it'll be online uh, just like this here. Okay, thank you so much. Have a All wonderful right. evening, you guys. All right, yeah. take care. Awesome.